we are experiencing some technical difficulties. All right. Please and... keep your hands and feet inside the ride at all times. <laughs> and now for the main attraction. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mind, Money, Muscle podcast, where our mission is to help you improve your financial, physical, and mental health by cutting out the bullshit and getting real with your situation. Hell yeah. And before we start, though, you guys, you know the drill. We're not going to try and sell you anything. We're not going to try and push anything in your face. So all we ask is that you share the show. Go to Mind, Money, Muscle podcast on IG. Let us know you watched it by sharing to your story. And let's continue the conversation from today. Absolutely. Let's get started. Before we get started on it, I'm just super stoked that we have figured out a recording schedule and we figured out how we're going to be posting more content out there for you guys. So I know we've talked about in the past, like come to my Mighty Muscle podcast on Instagram so we can continue the conversation. Um, we're really, really pushing for us to be as vocal and as out there as possible on our social media. So like I said, if you enjoy a show, please share it on your story. Uh, let us know that you enjoyed it, what you liked, what you didn't like. Fucking argue with us, whatever you want to do. Um, at the end of the day, these are our opinions, what we believe, what we believe in our philosophy. So argue with us, whatever you want to do, we'll be, we'll be down to fight in the DM. So let's, uh, let's get it going. <laughs> let's go. All right. Today's episode, fad diets versus reality. Absolutely. So at Mind, Money, Muscle, one of the underlying philosophies that we have is the ability to work on your physical, mental, um, and financial well-being. When it comes to fad dieting, like I've gone through the woodwork of YouTube, 10 years of experience in training, trying multiple different diets, really trying to hone in and figuring out what worked best for me and my clients. So as I've gone through all of this, I've realized that there's a lot of bullshit out there when it comes to these fad diets like keto, intermittent fasting, um, I would say like veganism, I don't know, just anything that's super, super restrictive like that. Um, so we're going to talk about why they work and why they don't. Now, the reason we believe it's very important for us to bring this up on the My Money Muscle podcast is that we want to make sure that as you go through life, we are improving your physical, mental, and financial well-being. This way, when we talk about these fad diets, why they work for some people and why they don't work for most, it's going to give us the ability to show you guys the right way to do things and our way of doing things so that you don't have to watch 10 different YouTube videos by some guy who's like your favorite celebrity who does keto and thinking it works for him. It's got to work for me. And then you go through the diet for about five weeks and you're like, fuck, this fucking sucks. Or you try intermittent fasting and you're like, wow, this really works. And you start telling everybody like, this is the greatest thing of all time. This is amazing. But you don't understand the underlying concept behind why it works. So we're going to talk about culture versus fad diets today. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just freaking excited to get going with it, man. Yeah, me too. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is why do people jump from diet to diet? So why do they jump from diet to diet? <laughs> okay. So in my experience from coaching, so we've coached over like 260 people now um, in the past like year and a half, which is fucking crazy to think of. That is wild. I actually like see on some people's Instagram bios where it'll be like, 1000 transformations and I'm like fuck I'll never get there like you know I have three and I remember saying that to myself when I was just starting out as a online coach but now we've worked with this many people and it's just fucking blown my mind it's and it's been what a year you just over year a year and a half year and a half that's 18 months that's crazy dude it's yeah so it, cool it's fucking insane like I'm getting Facebook notifications back of like you posted this one year ago and it's like a motivational quote I posted while I'm in the gym I'm like wow this is like the start of my journey when I started really popping off but the reason why people jump from diet to diet, um, number one, they don't, um, they don't go through a diet long enough to realize if it's going to work for them or not. Um, and then number two is they give up on themselves too easily that they believe that it's the diet that's not working and not them that's not working. All right. What's interesting about all this stuff, and I'll touch on this more later, all of these different diets will work. If your main priority is to lose weight, you know, lose muscle or sorry, if your main priority is to lose like fat mass, these diets will work, right? But what's the underlying reason why these things work? That's the reason I want to like talk about this on a podcast today, because there are people who try keto, for example, and they're like, fuck, this is the greatest thing I've ever fucking done in my life. Like I've lost like 30 pounds and in six weeks or whatever. And I'm like, this is why it works. Okay. This, this is why it works. So when you're going like when you're doing keto, for example, 
you are restricting the foods that you can eat, right? So the original reason why keto came to be was because there were people who were having epileptic seizures in the hospital um, and removing carbohydrates from their diet allowed them to not have these seizures as, um, how do you say, like as bad. Right? I didn't know. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. So it wasn't even meant to be like a diet for people to lose weight. But one of the things that they noticed was that people were losing a, a large amount of weight. So they started to do this outside of the hospital setting. People ran with it. People started writing books about it, saying that like it puts your body into ketosis. You piss out these ketones and it like starts burning all this fat and using fat for energy, which is completely true. You're using fat for energy because you don't have carbohydrates in your diet, which were your first initial energy source. But the way that I think about it here is, okay, well, if you're losing, using fat for energy, the first thought that you have in your mind is like, oh, I'm using body fat for energy. It's like, yes, that is the case, sure. But you're also consuming a higher amount of fats. What do people typically eat on ketosis diet? Bacon, butter, mm -hmm. meat products. Um, it kind of like gives you this A-OK -okay from society to be like, I'm just going to eat like, like shit, mm -hmm. right? but people will lose a lot of weight from it. And again, I'll go into this more when we go into other parts of um, the podcast, but like the reason why it works most more than any other fad diet is because the large number of people that attach themselves uh, to being someone in keto. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's well talked about, right? Joe Rogan has done it. Um, all of these different influencers have done it. Jordan Peterson even. Jordan Peterson. So you start seeing all this shit and you're like, if all of them are doing it, then it must, it must be great. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to totally fucking work for me. And it might, right? It, it definitely might. But the thing to remember here is the reason you're sticking to keto, for example, for so long is because you're seeing the culture behind it. And you're like, you kind of have this little like badge of honor that you're doing keto. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm in the club. Yeah, you're, you're in the club. Like you have, you have the keto badge on and everyone's super freaking proud of you. And you're like, wow, this is working for me. And you start to spread the word that like, you know, keto is what worked for me. And it's just like, I don't know. It, it's, it's very interesting to see like how much um, social acceptance will help someone achieve certain things. It's right? like a tribal mentality. Yeah. You need to be part of a tribe, you know? If you're part of a tribe, it's so much easier to feel like you're being pushed upward. Exactly. You know, or and, propelled upward. Yeah, and, and that's one of the big things when it comes to our coaching clients is like, we have a big community of people that all push each other to be better, to learn more, to support each other. And that's why we found really good success. If I didn't have that Facebook group, there wouldn't be as many transformations as there are because of the fact that people would feel very alone in what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? So like, Again, keto works really well because the culture that surrounds it. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into the other fat diets, let's talk about like why does keto work from a fat loss perspective? So anything, intermittent fasting, keto, um, what else do we have down here? Um, da, 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 da. What were the other diets that we were talking about too? Okay, I, I know almost. there was another one. <clears throat> um, intermittent fasting, keto... Maybe, maybe, I uh, don't even know if we touched on vegetarian or anything like that. Oh, yeah, like intuitive eating. Okay. Oh, that's the big one, right? Intuitive, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just touch on intermittent fasting and, and keto for a second. But the reason that keto and intermittent fasting works is because it restricts the food that you eat. You have less calories that you intake throughout the day without even thinking about it. But if you're a person who enjoys that level of restriction, like never eating a fucking carb again in your life, which is, I, I, I literally can't even think. I can't fathom that. I, I, I really can't. If you go down the keto train, I will guarantee you, I fucking guarantee you, you can't do it for more than a year. Guaranteed. Why is that? Because you have people who understand like social pressures from going out and enjoying food with friends. Mm -hmm. You're going to be so sick of the fact that you can't eat literally a third of the food that there is out there. I'm sure... Carbohydrates make up like, fuck, <laughs> go to a restaurant, go to a restaurant or a grocery store and try to find something that is just strictly keto, like protein and, and fats with very, very little carbs, right? And another justification for keto, like from people who are doing keto is like, I can eat all the vegetables I want though, but it's like, there are still carbs and vegetables or yeah. like, yo, I can, I can do keto, but I'll, I'll still have some fruit. 
those there are still carbs and fruit like you're mm-hmm. you're still going to fucking not be in ketosis if you consume you know x amount of carbs i i'm pulling this number out of my ass but i think it's like if you go above like 25 grams of carbs or like 30 you're out of ketosis again which is that little hey yeah i i wow. don't i don't know exactly what it is but like the trace amount of carbs that you're going to find in foods like bar none you're you're always going to find some there's carbs in milk right there's carbs in cream cheese there's carbs in cheese there's carbs in fuck what what's a, another generally accepted keto food crab meat all right really in crab meat yeah like so that i didn't know that that's the blue mind i know so what i'm trying to say is like when it comes to keto you have to understand that the reason you're losing weight is because you're restricting the amount of calories that you intake versus the calories that you output right if you're in a caloric deficit which is the one true way to lose weight because of the fact that the law of thermodynamics is a fucking law which straight which states energy cannot be destroyed or created it can only change in form thus proving the fact that calories in versus calories out works right you are restricting all of the carbs that you can eat by not eating them so you start to fill up on fats and proteins keto is not some fucking magic thing that's going to cause you to lose so much more weight it's just going to cause you to restrict even harder and be like i'm never touching a fucking carb but eventually you're going to hop off that train and start eating carbs again Mm -hmm. right if you have to hop on a quote-unquote diet to lose weight, you're doing it wrong, mm-hmm. right? It, you should change the habits in which you're eating or else you're going to be in this perpetual cycle of I'm going to gain a fuckload of weight and then I'm going to lose it again and mm-hmm. then I'm going to gain a fuckload of weight and then I'm going to lose it again and then you're going to find yourself being that fucking... That quick fix guy. Yeah, the quick fix like, oh, you know, like I tried Weight Watchers and mm-hmm. it didn't really work for me. Now, yeah, now I'm going to try uh, paleo. Or, oh shit, paleo didn't work for me. Now I'm going to try this, mm-hmm. right? You're always going to be in that fucking cycle if you don't, number one, stick to something long enough. Yep. And if you do stick to something long enough, you have to realize like, am I willing to stick with this for the rest of my life or should I just make habitual changes that will help me lose this weight? Mm-hmm. What lifestyle am I willing to commit to? Exactly. Yeah. E- exactly. Like, I, have you tried keto? I have never tried it. I can't, I can't imagine, bro. I, I can't imagine. I, I don't mean, know. Like, well, well, the first week I've heard is just like your body processing the obscene amounts of protein. And I've heard that it ain't fun going to the bathroom for the first week. Oh, I hear you. Or more. <laughs> so, I mean, good luck even going through that for the first week. I heard about that from Joe Rogan, who went on the uh, carnivore diet. Yeah, I, I heard that. That he was just yeah. pissing out of his ass. Yeah. For, <laughs> I don't even know how fucking long. I right. think I remember because uh, I think he said it was like a week or more. I th- I thought it was. I you want to do keto? Prepare yourself for that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be I'll be honest too. Like any sort of like diet change that you undergo, you're going to feel some sort of difference in mm-hmm. the way that you digest food. For example, if you eat like shit for the majority of your life, and then you switch to eating like a variety of vegetables of all different colors and having, you know, three servings of fruit every day and like five servings of vegetables and rices and meats and non-processed shit, your guts are not going to understand how to process that shit right away. It's going to take some time for it to assimilate itself to digesting vegetables and um, red pepper. Red peppers is a great example. Um, Red peppers have a chemical inside of the skin that cause it to not be digested by most people. If you consume red peppers, for example, or corn is another good one, you're probably going to find it in your shit. Like, if you, if you fucking, and I'm sure as a guy, like, everyone looks at their shit after they finish it and <laughs> they want it. They, they want that, you know, justification, not justification, that want, uh, what is it called? Confirmation? Yeah, or, or just like that. They just want to celebrate themselves. So, yeah, I took a fucking massive shit. That was, <laughs> like, look at that thing. Like, they're just so proud of it. Want to be proud like, of it? Yeah, yeah. They're like, it's like a newborn yeah, baby. There's like, that, holy. Look at that dump. Yeah, holy fuck. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to ask you a quick question about this. So uh, when you talk about your gut assimilating to a new diet, what's actually going on there? Mm. What, like, what is going on inside your body that prevents you from being able to just digest something on a, on a, on a whim, something brand new? So you can think about uh, this. This is a good analogy. So like the first time you ever weight trained mm-hmm. in your life, right? The first time you ever picked up a fucking dumbbell and you started working out. I'm sure you were fucking sore for like five days in a row, right? right? Oh, yeah. Or even when you stop going to the gym for a little bit and then you come back to it, 
you're sore as hell because your mm -hmm. body is not used to that stimulus anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine you've been your whole life. You've been eating a vegetarian diet, never touched meat ever once in your life. Right. Donald felt this. One of my coaches on my team, he was vegan for a year and a half. He did a prep. And then he went back to eating chicken and he said the chicken fucked him up because your body doesn't have the enzymes. Be like, think about it like this. Your body will excrete the enzymes that it knows um, it needs to break down the food that you take in on a regular basis, right? The same way that your muscles stick around because of the continuous stimulus of you working out. Mm -hmm. If you introduce something brand freaking new and it's like, what the fuck is this? Your body's going to take some time to create the enzymes to be able to break it down. Same thing. The first time you drank, you probably got absolutely fucking wasted. You probably had one beer and you're like, oh my God, like, oh yeah, incredible. I haven't drank in, I guess, since my birthday, but since prep, when I was in my like 180 day prep, the first time I drank was one beer in the Denver airport and it was a 20 ounce beer and I got 10 ounces down and I was like wasted beyond belief because my <laughs> body could not process it because it wasn't used to it, mm -hmm. right? Think about alcoholic, right? If they're continuously consuming booze, they'll take down a sick, like a, a, a 12 pack and be completely fine. No problem. Right? Oh yeah. I, I can go on with analogies, right? Smoking mm -hmm. weed, you'll get used mm -hmm. to it. Caffeine intake, you'll get used to it. Your body needs to understand how to create the enzymes to break down certain foods. Right. Right. Um, man, like, like I said, me going from eating like shit all the way up until, I don't know, right after New York, mm -hmm. ever since I started eating like a normal person again, like, <laughs> my, man, my, my guts have not been the happiest. Like, even eating 200 grams of protein again, I was like, oh, God. Really? It, it hit you quickly? Because you were gone for what? Uh, a week. A week. And in a week's time, your body had to reassimilate to the food you're eating again. Yeah. That's wild. I know. That's but crazy. so fast. I mean, after, after my prep, it was like three months mm -hmm. of me eating like shit. And then like a couple of weeks me, of me eating normally again. Mm -hmm. And then New York happened and I ate three square meals out at restaurants every single fucking day. <laughs> yeah. And then, <clears throat> and then, yeah, moving forward, I came back home and I was eating normally again. You know, the Greek yogurts, the, the vegetables, the, the chickens, mm -hmm. and my guts were just like, what? <laughs> But you eat, so when you're back on your diet, um, when you have like, cause you have like a list of recipes that you do. Do you have like a, like basically a, a list of things that you stick to within that? Or is it, or are you designing it based on the nutrition that kind of, uh, that you need for your lifestyle and you use the nutrition as the basis for your diet? Or do you have a specific number of things that you follow, like a strict diet? So the way that I, so the way that I and all of my clients go about um, their nutrition or how they eat um, is by counting macros. There's, there's definitely levels to how intense you can go about doing this. So number one, like first level is understanding how to count calories, mm -hmm. right? You don't talk, you don't care about protein or carbs or fat. It's just how many calories am I getting in? Do I have enough energy to sustain life? or lose weight or gain weight, depending on what my goal is. Mm. The next level of that is making sure that you hit calories and then protein. So how much protein am I getting within those calories? Third level is understanding carbs, fats, and proteins, right? Understanding that carbs are an energy source, fats really help with uh, maintaining your hormone regulation, protein, obviously, muscle protein synthesis, building muscle, especially your weight training. Next is about timing. After that, it's about the micronutrients aspect of it supplementation it's like you can go up this list of like how hardcore you do this shit mm -hmm. and then you can talk about yeah how like nutrient partitioning of like how many carbs at a certain time of the day depending get super on nerdy yeah you can, <laughs> you can go super in depth the way that i've found works best for my clients is to either focus in the level two or level three which mm -hmm. is protein plus calories or total macronutrient count so when it comes to getting in my micronutrients, um, I take a greens powder in the morning. I will generally have three or four servings of vegetables every day. Mm -hmm. Typically, it comes from leafy greens or um, asparagus or Brussels sprouts or green beans. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really switch around from that just because they're super easy to make. Um, I'll be honest, I'm pretty bad with fucking fruit. Like I was telling Christian today, like this is the first time I've had a fucking banana in like a year. 
Really? I suck at eating. Not going to lie. I'm pretty bad with fruit as well. I bought my first batch of bananas yesterday in a long time as well. Yeah. My so. my house is so bad with that. They'll buy Everyone will buy fucking four or five bananas and they'll just like let it chill in the fruit bowl. And then next time groceries come around, they'll look over at their bananas like, oh, fuck, they went bad. And they'll toss them <laughs> in the freezer and they'll be like, yo, I'll make I'll, we'll make banana bread. It's fine. We'll make banana bread. The other maybe a few weeks ago, we decided we we're going to spring clean the house. And oh, no. we look in the freezer, and the, the, there's like 40 or 50 bananas that are just black. And I'm like, okay, guys, you're either, either making banana bread like today, <laughs> or I'm tossing this shit out. Because like we don't have room in this freezer. So they made banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, one thing I want to ask you quickly, just because maybe a lot of people watching this don't know how to count calories or a place to start. Where's the best place to start with like an app for counting calories or something easy to figure out what they're eating in a day before we move on to the next uh, topic here? Yeah. So when it comes to counting calories, it, it first comes from figuring out how much calories you need to, to according to whatever goal you have. So if you're looking to lose weight um, or if you're looking to gain weight, you got to figure that out first. And then you got to figure out how many calories it takes for you to achieve whatever goal you have. So you, there are a bunch of online macro calculators or calorie calculators that'll tell you how much. Typically, they're a very good guess for how many calories you, sh you should consume depending on what your goal is. Everyone's activity level and overall metabolism is very, very different from each other. So just always know that those calculators give you the best guess, okay? Um, you take those calories, you follow them for seven days, you weigh yourself every single day and you see... Um, you know, have I gained weight? Have I lost weight? And then you make the adjustment there depending on what your goal is. If you're looking to gain weight, add 500 calories on top of that. If you're eating your quote unquote maintenance calories because the, cal or the uh, calculator told you to and you're gaining weight, great. Stop there. Because the more and more that you bump that up, the more actual fat mass that you're going to be gaining. Um, and that's pretty unadvantageous unless you are someone who's severely, severely underweight. So if you're wondering if you're severely, severely underweight, BMI scales are really great to look at for that, especially if you're untrained. For example, if I um, saw what my BMI was, I'd be obese, which is crazy because I'm like, I have a good amount of muscle mass on me and they don't account for that. That's, that's one major thing. Um, but yeah, if you're a female and you can see your abs, you need, you need fat mass. So pack it in. Um, if, you're a, if you're a male and you can see your rib cage, same thing. <laughs> right. absolutely same thing. they're fair rules those are fair rules absolutely all right so the next one i think we got was intuitive eating yeah okay so i'm okay so one commitment that we made um while doing the my money muscle podcast is that i will be okay with speaking about controversial topic intuitive eating is um, a topic that's very widely spread in Kelowna. um there are a lot of people who really vouch by it and i agree with it to a point so intuitive eating is the idea that you focus not on restricting things that you can and can't eat, but more so adding things into your diet and listening to your body when it wants something. So for example, if I was going throughout my day, and again, this is my base level one understanding of what intuitive eating is. I'm sure there are people who know more about this than I do. Base level understanding of intuitive eating is you go throughout your day, you wake up and you ask yourself, are you hungry? And if you're, the answer is no, then you don't eat. You go out through your day. You figure out if you're actually hungry or not. Great. I'm hungry. You figure out what you want to eat. You eat whatever your soul desires. And then as the weeks go on, you figure out um, you know, what more you can add into your diet, whether it be protein or vegetables. And you'll start to create your own way of eating depending on like, you know, how you listen to your body. Right? Are you hungry? Are you not? Try to add in more vegetables. If not, it's okay. So the reason I don't believe this is a good thing, and even if it's followed as purely as they've intended it to, okay, it's very hard to achieve a goal this way. So if you are, for example, obese, you have a lot of excess body fat on you, you are at a place where your health is at risk because of the fact that you are overweight, Listening to your body up to this point has got you to a place where you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you tell someone, listen to your body, and their body tells them, I want three bowls of cereal and I want ice cream, 
and you know one of the rules is like try your best to add in more protein it's like great well i'll have three bowls of cereal plus a scoop of protein powder mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying like it's very hard if you are overeating to work on this goal and it's very hard to if you're under eating because the way you got there in the first place is by listening to your body and not understanding like how to properly eat so if you're overweight you're gonna you're gonna keep being overweight in my mind and if you're underweight you're going to continuously stay underweight right because you know with working with so many people i've realized the people who are underweight they just can't push themselves to eat more food right They're just, i'm just so full and i'm looking at them like you've only had 900 calories today bro like you got this <laughs> and the thing that i'll always say is because like everyone has this like weird notion that they shouldn't force themselves to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like they shouldn't force food down or like if they're hungry, they should just eat. And maybe this is a bad way of looking at it. And again, this only, this only like applies to people who have a goal of weight loss or weight gain. If your goal is to feel happier and healthier in your body, intuitive eating makes the most sense because it's, it's just eating, mm -hmm. right? At yeah. the end of the day, it's just fundamentally eat when you're hungry. <laughs> you're going to be happy when you're eating when you're hungry. Yes. All the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like it, that is how we learn to eat as children. Mm -hmm. Not like breakfast, lunch, dinner. It was just like, is baby hungry? Baby is hungry. We feed it. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's how we've learned like how to eat like, mm -hmm. in past times. But now we have breakfast cereals and like, you know, mid morning snack and like, oh, snacks throughout the day and dessert. You know what I mean? All of this stuff that's added on where like, you know, food industries have just like made it killing because like now there's just like, Eight meals a day. Eat eight meals a day. It'll speed up your metabolism. Blah blah blah. blah. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say too. Like the whole idea of intuitive eating. Like think about if you just understand the little bit that you or I or anyone knows about how complicated the body is and how it processes yeah. everything that goes on. How is any of that intuitive? Mm -hmm. There's no way we can know that. So by listening to like our our body or our mind, like there's no way. Yeah. It's it's it, it's, it's almost completely nonsensical to just think that you can feel something and know exactly what your body needs in that moment. It's exactly. so complex. Yeah, exactly. And one of the, somebody was talking about intuitive eating. I think it was Greg Doucette on a YouTube video and he, he was, he was ripping it apart pretty, pretty hardcore. But one of the comments was like, um, <laughs> one of the comments was like, oh man, like, I know they talk about listening to your body and, and not, and my body keeps telling me to go back to my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the idea was that like, yeah, sure, listen to your body, but there are sometimes you just can't listen to your body. <laughs> That's right? perfect. Like, for example, like there, there are times where my body is telling me like, yo, I want to go out and drink tonight, but I also know that that, that doesn't work for my goal. Mm -hmm. Or if I was dieting down for a show, listening to my body would be like, yo, fucking go destroy that tub of ice cream right now. And it would put me away from the goal that I have. But again, if you're way of, if you just want to feel better about your body, I think everyone should adopt intuitive eating. But if you have a goal of building muscle or losing weight or um, gaining weight, you need to put yourself into this place of uncomfortability, right? So people who are looking to gain weight, they'll always tell me like, I just feel so bad forcing food down my throat. I'm like, bro, like, there are people who are overweight who have to put themselves through some form of uncomfortability to lose weight. So it's the same exact fucking thing for you. If you want to gain weight, you're going to have to be uncomfortable with the food that you're eating. If you're looking to build muscle, you're going to have to be uncomfortable with the weight that you're pushing. If you want to become a better public speaker, you have to get uncomfortable getting up there and actually fucking public speaking, mm -hmm. right? Progressive overload, just like with putting on more size or more muscle mass in the gym, has to happen with other habits that you have in your life, right? You want to read a full fucking book in a day? You don't just fucking go at it and read a full book in a day. You start with 10 pages. And the next day you do 15. And the next day you do 30. You work your way up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Baseline, intuitive eating. Great if you want to be where you're at. Not great if you're looking to achieve a certain goal that is a physical change. If you want to feel good about your body and have a mental, just like happiness, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Like, intuitive eating makes the most fucking sense. Oh, that makes me happy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Eat when hungry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's the saying? To get the results, you no. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. 
in order to in order to get the thing that you've never done uh hold on I'm, I'm fucking up this last part here but you know the rest of the saying basically to get the results you've never had you need to do what you've never done mm -hmm. and you can't track what's how you're getting there if you're just eating on a whim how can you have a goal preach how can you have a goal if you or how can you reach your goals if you're not tracking your steps or and you're blindly stepping right right you exactly. can't do it you can't do it at all so how do you become stronger without tracking like how how much more weight you're pushing right how do you how do you put on more muscle mass without tracking like okay like weighing yourself for example mm -hmm. i feel like i'm i'm trying to like apologize a bunch for me saying this but like by me saying like i totally agree intuitive eating works well if you're this type of person blah 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 because like again i i i highly highly respect certain people in Kelowna who've pushed intuitive eating to the fucking like max mm -hmm. but for me it doesn't make sense if you have a goal if i was intuitively eating right now it would tell me yo go get mcdonald's right <laughs> but i understand there are going to be people who say that like oh but that's not actually intuitive eating you have to do the xyz thing but like from the baseline perspective it's listening to your body eating when you're hungry etc mm -hmm. so I, I don't know that's that's my whole idea on intuitive eating Oh. And what size of population would fit if we were to narrow it down to show just how many people should steer clear of it on a general population scale, like 90% of people, 95 or 5% uh, of people wouldn't, it would work for or less than 10. I would, I guess I would try to figure out who is extremely underweight or overweight mm -hmm. and who has a major goal to build muscle or, or lose fat. Mm -hmm. All of those people, intuitive eating, I would not suggest. Everyone who is struggling with the way that they eat and it's struggling with their mental health, they don't have this like goal to be like extremely strong in the gym or like compete in a competition or you know be the best, most muscular version of themselves or improve to a certain degree like that. I think that intuitive eating makes sense for everyday people. Mm-hmm. So like if you don't take the gym too too seriously, intuitive eating makes sense if you've always found yourself following some sort of fucking diet. Right? So I don't know. I don't know what the percentage of people is that are like obese, but those people should definitely not do it in my mind. It's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> if you're overweight, do not trust your intuition. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. <laughs> um okay, so what do you what do you know about intermittent fasting and have you ever done it before? Uh yeah, I've tried intermittent fasting. I have done most days, I because of my schedule now and in the past, I mostly have done like 16-hour fast and 8-hour window. I've even done as, as small as 4-hour window of eating um, for a little while. Even when I was up north, when I was uh, working, I did that for a little while. And you definitely lose weight quickly, but you're, you're, the mental side of it is very difficult as well. Mm -hmm. So there's some trade. I mean, like you feel really, it's, it's weird. You're tired, but you feel mentally clear. Um, and I noticed that it was the whole day though. I was just thinking about food yeah. and I had such a hard time focusing on it. Um, but it's great. I mean, you feel really good afterwards and you get in a rhythm of it. Um, I definitely enjoyed it, but I am not a scientific minded guy when it comes to this thing. So I'm not the best guy to take as far as the, uh, the one anecdote you want to listen to. So Keith, what do you have to say about intermittent fasting? Um, I think it's really fair to listen to your point of view of it because you've done it mm -hmm. and you can touch on the experiences that you've been through. So like you, you were very food focused, you mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. um, did you have a goal for intermittent fasting when you were doing it? Uh, yeah. So I had definitely allowed myself to, when I was at, when I was working up North, I was for a while trying to gain weight okay. and then I gained a lot of weight and realized, well, that was a lot of fat. And so I was like, okay, I need to correct this. And so I was like, I need to go back down. And I went, I, so I was trying to go back down and it doesn't come off as fast as you think, even intermittent fasting. That's oh, what no, I noticed. It's not. a very slow process. Yeah. It's way easier to pack it on than to take it off. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so intermittent fasting. Okay. So this is, this is pretty interesting, but back in like the early 2010s or like the 2000s, one of the more widely popular ideas behind losing weight um, was to eat more meals throughout the day because it kept your metabolism revving and running and you're consistent, always burning out mm -hmm. just by eating so much more. Now we have changed that into the opposite 
where intermittent fasting, you're giving your metabolism and your body a break um, during a 16 hour or 12 hour window, whatever it or 16 hour or 20 hour window, so that it can be more efficient in burning the food that you only intake during that four hour window. All right. So to understand if it works, all right, to understand if it works, calories have to be consistent in both groups. Now imagine we had two groups of people. We had a hundred people over here following a 20 hour fasting window with a four hour eating window. This other group of 100 people can eat whenever the fuck they want to. The, they are both following a 2,500 calorie diet, okay? Let's say the 100 people here, their exact identical twins are the same 100 people over here, all right? Let's make it as fucking clean as possible. Let's say they're in the hospital. Also, metabolic ward study. They burn the consistent amount of calories while being awake. They don't train. Just people. Like, let's imagine we're in a fucking vacuum here. For this to make sense, the group of people in the intermittent fasting side have to lose a significant amount of weight more than the people in the non-intermittent fasting side while eating the exact same amount of calories. Okay? So, research has shown that if calories are completely accounted for, right, they both eat the exact same amount, you will not lose any more significant weight than the group who did not do intermittent fasting. The reason why, and just like keto, the reason why that people lose weight on intermittent fasting is because you're restricting the amount of calories that you eat throughout the day. Think about it like this. If you are consistently restricting yourself to only eating in a four-hour time frame, and let's say it takes your body 3,000 calories to consistently be the weight that you're at, do you think you can fit in 3,000 calories in a four-hour window? I can't even No. Absolutely not. Never in your life, okay? <laughs> I, maybe me straight after prep, oh, I'll fucking dummy a box. You'd have done 6,000 in, yeah, in yeah, four yeah, hours. No, no problem, no problem. <laughs> but the reason that they lose weight is because they're just eating less. That's, that's the bare minimum or like the bare bones of it. They're just eating less food because they're only able to consume food in a short time frame, mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> again, the reason that this works for a lot of people is two things and i've i've done inter 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 blah, 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 intermittent <laughs> fasting before and the reason i liked it a lot is because i had a lot of mental clarity by not eating right away in the morning mm, that's a big thing that's a, that's a huge thing and it makes people feel good right and you get excited to get into your first meal of the day whether it's at 12 or 4 o'clock whatever it is mm -hmm. so i see the benefit of doing it plus you're restricting your calories right but one of the arguments behind intermittent fasting is that it improves insulin sensitivity and your ability to um, retain fat mass versus muscle mass, depending on how often you're eating throughout the day. Basically, it's saying that if you're eating a lot less food throughout, like a lot less food frequently throughout the day, uh, the sensitivity that you have towards insulin is going to be higher than if you're eating always consistently throughout the day. Okay, so. Insulin, for example, is the, um, the hormone released by the pancreas that basically will um, decide, I don't know if a better word, what a better word would be, decide whether food that you intake will be shuttled as fat storage or into your cell and be able to be used as energy. So your body as it goes through differences in insulin sensitivity will always compensate for itself depending on what's happening in the body, right? Your body is a homeostasis fucking phenom, right? It, it always wants to be the exact same weight. It always wants to be the exact same way. It always wants to do the exact same fucking shit. So when you're going through something like this, there is going to be no, absolutely no major difference um, whether you're consuming calories in a four-hour window or a fucking... 16 hour window because of the fact that your body is just going to put on fat mass the way it decides to um, or not if your calories are consistent whether you're eating in a four hour time frame versus the rest of the day there's going to be no significant difference there, there really isn't right everyone wants to put some magical science behind some special technique when there really isn't and calories in versus calories out is the fucking it's proven it, it's a law 
right? The law of thermodynamics. And so if you can enjoy just calories in, calories out all day instead of just for four hours. Then you're going to have a lot happier life. Because <laughs> when you did it, was it the same as me where you're thinking about your first meal all day until that first meal? Yeah. So the way that I did it was um, it wasn't a huge restrictive um, window. So I believe mine was like 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. The one thing that I, that helped me with was I didn't snack at night, mm-hmm. which is a lot of people's big downfall. And you had like a cutoff time where you like couldn't fucking walk into the cupboard and like sneak a cookie or like <laughs> have a couple bites of this or like, you know, the girlfriend brings out a, you know, uh, a dessert home from work and you wanted to have a bite. Nope. Intermittent fasting can't do that. Mm-hmm. It's going to save you a fuckload of calories that way. And that's how intermittent fasting works. I believe, I honestly think if I'm to suggest any one of these bad diets, it would be intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, just because you can be super non-restrictive about it and it cuts you from eating shitty food at the end of the night. So eating window from like 10, 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. and you just cut yourself off there. I, I don't know. It, it, 10 hour eating window, it's like that's not crazy restrictive, but if it keeps you from eating like dog shit at the end of the night, then I think it's really fair to use. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. If, if you can stop yourself from that extra 500 calorie candy bar or that extra bowl of ice cream at the end of the night, that's going to help you so much in the long run. 100%. So let's, let's kind of wrap this up a bit and just talk about longevity and like consistency um, when it comes to short term dieting. The thing that'll work for you is the thing that you can commit to long term. All right. Most people won't give themselves enough time to realize if intermittent fasting or keto or calorie counting or Atkins or Weight Watchers or whatever the fuck diet that you want to do is going to fucking work for you. All right. These diets all work. Some of the promises that they make within these diets are kind of bullshit, but they kind of like draw you in a little bit more. Like keto, it's like, oh, you, you literally, you're a fat burning machine. Yeah, you are because you're not consuming carbs. Like, your body has to use energy somehow, mm-hmm. right? It's the only place it's got. It's got it, the choice. It, it just got fats. And if you didn't have fats, it would utilize protein, and which would lead to muscle breakdown, which mm-hmm. is not good. All right. So, you're starving then. Yeah. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't just eat protein. That would be fucking bad. Longevity and consistency is the major key, right? And what sucks is there's always something, some sort of dessert that is trending on fucking TikTok or something that you can make to like create, you know, um, cure your sweet tooth. I think the biggest thing to remember is that you need to have a diet or a way of eating that works well for you, all right? It's got to be able to work well for you. You got to do it long term um, because if you can't, like if, if you can't do it long term, you're going to go back into old ways. Mm-hmm. The best way to do this is to change habits, right? Small things. Don't drink pop. Drink diet sodas, all right? If you like pop, drink diet sodas. You want to take it a step farther? Just drink water as the only thing that you drink ever. Every time you go out and have alcoholic drinks, fucking have White Claws because they're 100 calories each, right? Commit to yourself that you're only going to eat out twice a week or once a week, right? No more fast food. Like the more little agreements that you can make with yourself, it's just going to peel off over time and you're going to feel like you're not even on a diet. Like you're just, yeah. It's going to be the way you eat and the way your lifestyle is. Exactly. And I think the big thing to add to this too is your why. You know, if, if you're just doing a diet, you know, ah, I want to lose, I want to lose five pounds. Well, guess what? You lose that five pounds and you know you're coming up on that five pounds and you're going to be thinking about all the food that now because you've made it, you can go and eat. But if you're thinking about because I want to become this type of person, because I want to maintain this physique, because I want to live an extremely healthy lifestyle, and you deeply, deeply want that more than just to lose a five, five pounds or a, a small little goal, you're going to make that change a lot easier. And you're going to be able to stick to it and say no to all the things and people or, and situations that would jeopardize that for you. Your why is the backbone. You mm-hmm. need a big why. So really think about that before you're starting any diet and make sure that you have one. Otherwise, it's going to be really short-lived. Yeah. And are you losing weight because of you or are you losing weight because you're trying to look good for somebody else? 100%. Yeah. It's got to be for you. Yeah. It's got to be your own self-interest. Yeah. And what was I going to say here? The, when, it, when it comes to losing weight, like think about all the people that there are out there. Maybe you're that person. 
who is always jumping from diet to diet and their major goal is to always do something with weight loss. Like, I just want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. How much mental bandwidth do you think that person has in achieving another goal that they have for themselves? <laughs> like, the most important to them always, most important thing to them always is to be able to lose weight. And it's like, bro, I, if you're able to do it habitually and not by undergoing some sort of diet, you're going to be able to put a lot more mental focus on achieving another goal, which is, I don't know, fucking saving money mm -hmm. or building more muscle in the gym, fucking starting a business, whatever, whatever it is. So yeah, that's it, man. Fad diets. Quick recap. Um, quick recap about all of this. Keto, intermittent fasting, intuitive eating, paleo, whatever. They all work because they restrict calories. Sorry, not intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is just eating. Just eating. Everything else works because it restricts certain foods that you can eat. The number one reason that you're going to commit to a diet long term is because the culture surrounding by it and, again, finding your internal why. If you have a big why and you have people supporting you on that why, you're going to go really far. That's right? huge. Like, um, oh, what was that experiment? So, um, right, right. So there's this guy and they were doing some sort of like sales seminar and he brought this guy up to the front of the, um, the stage and he stood beside him and he didn't say anything and he just started walking, walking along this line. And the guy just started following him because he thought he was like motioning for him to follow. And he followed him. Great. Right. And he said, great job. He high five. It was awesome. And then he got in front of him and then he just put his fist towards him like really slowly like this. And the dude's initial reaction was to like push back on the fist because he didn't want to get hit. Right. And what he was trying to explain was when you walk along with your, in this context, employees, they're going to be more willing to do stuff that you don't even have to tell them to do. But as soon as you start giving, you know, start pushing against them, they're going to, put on some sort of resistance so if you have people in your life that see you undergoing some sort of diet and they fucking hate the fact that you're doing it you're gonna put on resistance you're not gonna want to do it you're gonna be convinced to stop but when you're surrounded by a culture of people that want to see you succeed you're gonna go so much farther because you have supportive people around you all right and then the last thing i'll touch on is scientific based uh research great guys to be able to follow when it comes to this um, are going to be all of the 3DM, uh, 3DMJ guys, all the RP um, Renaissance periodization guys. Excuse me. So like Mike Israetel, Eric Helms, uh, Chris Barricat. There are a few guys on TikTok that are awesome too. So like JPG Coaching. Um, my goodness. There are a couple of other guys that I, I can't think of off the top of my head. But science-based, right? Jeff Nippard is another great one. He's great. If you have a, if you have a coach you have to make sure that they can prove what they're telling you to do or at least like beyond a reasonable doubt show you why they're doing something based by science and not just like yo I've seen, yo rogan did it bro like <laughs> what's gonna work work for me bro okay work for me trust me bro it. trust me bro so anyway that's it that's all thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the my money muscle podcast if you guys found value in this i've Freaking love if you could share this onto your Instagram stories. Tag us at My Money Muscle Podcast on Instagram. Uh, you can follow us uh, on our Instagrams also, Keith James Fit over here. And I believe you changed your Steve Harlow underscore. There you go. Steve, on Instagram. Steve Harlow underscore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. But before we go, guys, we got one last thing $500 giveaway. Yes, sir. We got a giveaway. And how many people have even shared? How many do we have? I'll be completely, I'll be completely honest. The fact that we haven't talked about this more on social media. Um, kind of pushes away, like, not very many people know about it. Because if I think about the amount of people who us. listen to the podcast, it's like we have to use our other, other platforms to like showcase that we're doing this. So yeah, yeah absolutely. We're gonna make sure that we put this out to you guys in a lot more easy way, so that you can start listening to the podcast, start doing this stuff, um, and possibly win that five hundred bucks. So we'll be coming to you a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, Peace out, out, fam. Right on.